Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blog Quick Pitch for January 17th, 2022. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. You're going to get all of our latest content here at the Beer Baseball Blog when you do that. And it really helps the algorithm of what we're doing. And uh, yeah, you get everything that we're doing. A little background on the Beer Baseball Blog. We started in 2016 as a travel journal, documenting our major league, minor league, college, independent baseball, and craft beer adventures at stadiums, breweries, and points of interest across the United States. In 2020, the blog pivoted to doing a weekly live video podcast called the Beer Baseball Blogcast. Angela Trinidad, Kevin Lyon, Cowboy Jack Durango, and myself are live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. So please join us tomorrow. We have our 90th episode. We've done it 90 straight weeks. Join us tomorrow night um, if you can. Uh, as always, you can watch the replay at on our website at beerbaseball.com. The blogcast features craft beer reviews where we all bring a unique craft beer of choice and sample and discuss it. We also have Baseball Card Sharks, which is a fun and interactive game that we invented using new and old baseball cards. This not only involves the hosts, but also involves the viewers watching. We also have a baseball trivia segment that tests everybody's knowledge of the history of baseball and a fun learning segment called This Day in Baseball History, where we mix over 100 years of baseball history with a obscure pop culture, music, television, movie, and pro wrestling references. It's always a lot of fun every week. So here's a sample of This Day in Baseball History. For January 17th, January 17th, 1983, Bob Horner and the Atlanta Braves come to terms on a $6 million four-year deal with an additional $400,000 in bonuses if he keeps his playing weight under control during the season. The agreement calls for the Atlanta third baseman to be weighed every Friday during homestands, and if the scale doesn't exceed 215 pounds, he will receive a $7,692.31 incentive per weigh-in. Horner was drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the first overall pick in 1978 in the amateur draft out of Arizona State University and made his Major League uh, Baseball debut in the same year. He's only a handful of players to go directly from college to the starting lineup in the majors without spending a day in the minor leagues. In his first game, he belted a home run off Hall of Fame pitcher Burt Blylevin of the Bra of the Pirates, excuse me. He most, uh, played mostly as third baseman, but later transitioned to a first baseman, but was hampered by injuries for most of his playing career. Horner also played one season of, in, the, uh, in Japan uh, for the Tokyo Yakult Swallows. Now, I'm absolutely here to put the rumors to bed that Bob Horner moonlighted as a three-time NWA he World Heavyweight Champion, but for keen observations, uh, for keen followers of pop culture, you might think this weight issue sounds a bit familiar. It actually wasn't Bob Horner, but in 1985, David Letterman called out Atlanta Braves reliever Terry Forster. He called him a fat tub of goo in a now classic late night feud. Forrester eventually was the guest on the show and had a great sense of humor about it all. Answering questions about the best stadium food on the road and cooking tacos with Dave in a separate segment. Forrester also recorded a novelty track in 1985 in response to it all with a rap song called Fat Is In with a band called, uh, called Terry Forrester and the Love Handles. Now, you may think this is crazy, but if you look in the YouTube uh, comments, in, in, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I've actually linked the David Letterman interview and the fat is in, uh, someone made a video, I believe it was Dan Epstein, which actually um, is an author that we'd like to talk to at some point. Um, but I, uh, it's actually not, uh, there was actually a video, but it, it doesn't exist out there, it, it not, not on YouTube at least. 
Um, but there is the song, and you can actually listen to the song Fat Is In by Terry Forster. And actually, it isn't by Terry Forster. It's by someone else who's rapping, but Terry Forster lent his name to it. And you can check those, check those uh, videos in the description. And finally, a happy 78th birthday to former second baseman for the Philadelphia Phillies, California Angels, and Boston Red Sox. Uh, his name is Denny Doyle. Doyle has the distinction of having the only hit in three one-hitters in his career, getting the only hit, a leadoff single in the first inning against Nolan Ryan of the New York Mets on April 18, 1970, and hitting a two-run home run in a game versus Cincinnati, pitched by Gary Nolan on May 24, 1971. Then on July 18, 1972, against the San Diego Padres, Doyle broke up a uh, no-hitter by Steve Arlen, uh, singling with two out in the ninth inning. Uh, Padres manager Don Zimmer pulled the third baseman in to guard against a possible bunt, which by uh, baseball standards is kind of like a no-no when usually uh, a no-hitter is going on. Uh, you're not supposed to bunt. It's like kind of a baseball etiquette. Uh, but he actually pulled the third baseman in in case of a bunt. And um, the ball went over the third baseman's head. And uh, Arlen was actually uh, credited with a single and breaking up the no hitter. Now, there was no Padre no hitter until uh, last year in 2021 when Joe Musgrove threw a no hitter. So in 1972, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty long drought. But Doyle's major league career is uh, perhaps best known for his role in the famous Game 6 in 1975 World Series versus the Cincinnati Reds, which featured Carlton Fisk's dramatic 12th inning home run that has become one of baseball's iconic highlights. Doyle was involved in a ninth inning play that baseball fans still discuss. The score was tied 6-6 six to six and the bases were loaded with no outs and Doyle on third base when Fred Lynn lifted a fly ball to short left field after Reds in, uh, outfielder uh, George Foster made the catch. Doyle tagged up and attempted to score the winning run. He was thrown out at the plate, which inadvertently helped set up uh, Carlton Fist's home run in extra innings. Uh, but Denny Doyle, 78 today. So for more fun like this, join us at live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch for the Beer Baseball Blogcast with Angelo Trinidad, Kevin Lyon, Cowboy Jack Durango, and myself. Here's where we can, you can find us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, we can also be found at beerbaseball.com. If we gave you some value today, please give us a like and a follow and check us out tomorrow for the Beer Baseball broadcast. Turn on that bell notification for all of our latest content, and we will see you tomorrow night for more craft beer and curveballs. Good night, everyone.